Welcome to part three of the video writing series for this artist major course. This segment supports again uh, the English writing lesson that you'll receive in orientation, Papa 930.05. So let's get into the topic of active voice and passive voice. What are they and why is it important to write an active voice? Again, this is a quote from an educator at Ball State University. Uh, so it's not just an army standard, it's ge a generally accepted practice that when you write an active voice, it certainly makes your writing more vigorous, more natural, and more clear to the reader what your intent is, and th that the subject of your sentence is the one uh, that's doing the action. So let's talk about voice. What do we mean by voice? Active voice, passive voice, what is that? Well, the concept of voice refers to where your emphasis lies in your sentence. Are you emphasizing the person who's doing the action or the person who's receiving the action in your sentence? And ask yourself, where do you think the emphasis should be? If we're writing an active voice, obviously the person doing the action should be the emphasis and should be the subject of your sentence. And we'll talk about why that becomes a problem uh, when you write in passive voice. So let's talk about the subject versus the doer of the action. In this case, Frankie shot Johnny. Very simple sentence structure, and like C-spot run, okay? But Frankie shot Johnny. Frankie obviously is the one doing the shooting. There is action in the sentence because somebody was shot. Frankie's the one doing the shooting. Frankie is the subject of the sentence. That is active voice. If we were, however, to rewrite that sentence, say stating that Johnny was shot by Frankie now who are we emphasizing we're emphasizing the receiver of the action Johnny was shot by Frankie we are leaving the reader guessing till the end of the sentence who did or does the action now think about that in terms of the army writing style if you're writing an order do you want to leave the doer the unit the individual responsible for the action till the very end of the order Absolutely not. You should begin the order by who's doing the action. And that's why we want you to write in passive, in active voice and avoid passive as much as possible. We're not waging war on passive voice, but again, you want to limit, minimize the amount of passive voice in your writing. <clears throat> in this case here, the adjutant assists the commander. Where's the emphasis? On the subject and the doer, the adjutant. The commander is the receiver of the action of assistance. In this case here, if we reword that, say the commander is assisted by the adjutant, we're taking the receiver of the action, the commander, moving it to the subject of the sentence. The commander is assisted by the adjutant. So in this case, we've made the receiver the subject, that's passive voice. In this case, the adjutant assists the commander. It also moves the doer to the end of the sentence. So we're reversing the receiver and the doer of the actions and making it passive. And the reason it's passive, is, again, is because we're leaving the reader guessing till the end of the sentence who is supposed to or who does this action. The commander is assisted by the adjutant. Passive voice. The adjutant assists the commander. Active voice. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this example. Passive voice, sometimes we leave the doer out altogether. Johnny was shot. Not a lot of information there, is there? We don't know who shot Johnny in this case. It's passive voice. All we know is that an action happened. We know who the receiver of the action was, but we don't know who did the action. Now imagine if you wrote orders like this or you sent out orders to your subordinates and left out the person or the unit responsible for doing the requirement. Everybody would be shaking their heads wondering who's supposed to do this action. Here's some examples I want you to think about as you see the sentence whether it's active or passive voice. Sentence number one, John broke the window. Obviously there's action. Broke is an act, action verb. John is the one doing the action. 
Again, that's active voice. The window was broken by John. Still action, so we know that there's voice in the sentence. The window was broken by John. We leave the doer till the very end of the sentence. We move the doer to the end, make the receiver, the window, the subject. That's passive voice. And in this case, the last example, the window is broken. We leave the doer out altogether. So that leaves the reader guessing, okay, so who broke the window? That's why we say passive voice can be vague or ambiguous because either you leave the reader guessing till the end or you leave the doer of the, of the action out altogether. <clears throat> Here's some examples. The information was received. Received by whom? What information? There's a lot of questions that can be asked at the end of that sentence. That's passive. Example number two. The briefing is given every Monday morning. What briefing? Is given by whom? Who gives the briefing? Who's responsible for doing that action? We don't know. It's left out of the sentence altogether. Passive voice. It was discovered that a weapon had been lost. Who discovered it? It was lost by whom? Those are, those are questions we still have. We don't know the doers of the action. Passive voice. Solid waste was not disposed of properly. Well, who's responsible? Okay, and again, questions left lingering at the end of passive sentences. <clears throat> One way to check whether or not active or passive voice is an issue is to look for action in the sentence. If there's no action happening in your sentence, then it cannot be passive voice. There is no voice if there's no action. So ask yourself, if there is action, who's doing it? Who, who is supposed to do the action? And when you answer that question, you will have the subject of your sentence. So when you look at your writing, ask yourself, is the subject doing the action or receiving the action in your sentences? If the subject is receiving the action, then it's passive and you need to ask yourself, who does it? Reword the sentence to make it active. The answer to the who does the question needs to be the subject of your sentence. So in these examples, ask yourself if there's action happening in the sentence. Sergeant Jones answered the phone. Yes, there's action, something is happening. Sergeant Jones is, an Jones is answering the phone, that's action. The concept was new to her. Any action? Absolutely not. There is no action. Yes, we do have a to be helping verb was in the sentence. However, it is not act passive or active voice because there's no action. The problem was brought to his attention. Was brought to his attention. There is action. There's something happening. Somebody is bringing something to someone's attention. Was brought. We don't know who, who brought it to his attention, therefore it's passive voice. Now that completes this segment. In the next segment we will get into another rule for identifying passive and how to change it to active voice. Thank you for watching.